It's amazing when you watch this game, guys. It was tied after three, and then the rookie from North Carolina with his college coach, Roy Williams, watching, took control of the game. Yeah, put on a shooting display for a guy that was 0 for 5, 0 for 3. Seven threes. From the 3, and, and also came into the game shooting 26%. The Bulls as a team, one of the worst three-point shooting teams in the league, and also especially at home. So you would think, like, like that's the least, the last thing you would expect to happen, happen. But it's, again, it's another, another young guard. I heard, you know, Clyde say this. He's right. Kobe White, Colin Sexton, De'Aaron Fox, like just getting off, going off against the Knicks and the the defense, which, you know, the zone was interesting to watch. Yeah. Right? Uh, it seemed it to works. create turnovers. It started a little work. bit. But, you know, one guy gets hot and no one can turn off the water, like you always like to say. Yeah, and, and when a guy gets hot, as hot as Kobe White did, you got to stick with him. You can't get let him get any more open looks, but he just completely found it. And sometimes when you're a scorer and a shooter, you go through those long droughts, those long slumps, and you just get something to go your way, something starts to click, and then your teammates start to look for you, and then they start to call play after play after play to get you the ball, to get you open looks, and that's when the defense has to adjust and say, wait a second, this guy's starting to knock down shots. We can't give him any airspace we can't give him any opportunity to continue on this role and the Knicks couldn't find him and he just continued he just continued to just knock down shot shot after shot after shot after shot after shot in that fourth quarter <laughs> literally you know what Here, here's a guy that a lot of people were excited about coming into this draft I right? loved him because he really can talks. shoot the basketball I remember with Carolina mm -hmm. I mean he ran the point he could shoot and you know you got to shoot in today's game and this guy just flat out started draining triples there in transition gets the one this is a tough shot well defended but at the same time don't let him get his feet set I mean these are quick catch and shoots so you got to adjust once He's hit three in a row. Can't let him be in rhythm like this. Wide this open. kid flat out has a stroke, and he's open on a lot of these. A couple of them were contested. There's Roy. But There's Roy coach. really brought his old uh, his old player a lot of a, a lot of good karma. Let's say to speak um, tonight on this game. It's interesting. So this on Twitter, Williams, the coach, obviously in Chicago, because he felt like he needed to give White. A hug and encouragement as he hasn't been shooting the ball very well recently. Oh, really? <laughs> Williams not recruiting. He's solely there to support his former point guard. Well, maybe Roy Williams should take a sabbatical. Uh, that was earlier in the night. Maybe she's take a leave of absence from North Carolina and watch White play. That's an amazing turnaround for a, for a young rookie guard, the seventh overall pick, struggling college coach in the house, and he just, I just can't, lit it up. I can't tell you what that means, though. When you... You know, you're just trying to find your way as a young rookie. You're competing for playing time. A lot of things are coming at you really quick. You're trying to learn a whole new system, trying to adjust to a whole new city, and then all of a sudden you have someone that really has been there for you and been like one of your basketball godfathers in Roy Williams, your coach from college. He shows up to support you. When you have people like that in the stands, like when my family used to come watch me play, any close friends, I used to play better. It just, it's just, that's just how it works. When you know you have that support of people that have helped you achieve this level and make it to the NBA, and then they come support you at a game, it definitely does make a difference, and it made a huge difference for Kobe White tonight. And certainly after, you know, another loss for the Knicks, they It's like when somebody. you go watch Zach they, in hockey. Does he not play better? Yeah, especially if I just stay quiet. Okay. <laughs> that's the most important thing. Your post-game breakdown cheer. of your son's hockey. Cheer. Get, 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 cheer. Just, no, 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 that's where I'm, yeah, I'm a lot quieter in that building than, than I am maybe watching these games but you know what I mean it's that's a great story to see like you just mentioned what, what, what Roy did there from a Knicks perspective they could use a hug and some encouragement because yes. there was this is a game where RJ Barrett finds himself again right. you know which was good after a couple of games where he looked like he was struggling the shot at the end of the third quarter ties it up I mean they still went through their turnovers and their typical up and down play but yet right there once again yeah. you think going into the fourth quarter and it's just a game to game. It's just incredible. And David Fizell has talked about this, how they have moments that take away from what could be a good performance. And this one happened, happened in the fourth quarter where they just can't find the rookie. And he gets, I mean, I mean, when was the last time you saw a player? Scalding Seven high. threes in a fourth quarter. 23 yeah. points in the quarter. Yeah. Career high 27 for White in the game. Knicks outscored in that fourth quarter, 35-17. But as you guys just touched on, pretty solid outing for R.J. Barrett. Yes. Three points in the win against Dallas and nine in the loss to Cleveland. So a little bit of a struggle coming into tonight, but he was much better. Well, you could see he wanted to bounce back off those two games. He came out in the first quarter. He had 14 points in the first half. In the first quarter.
the first quarter, he barely missed a shot, and he was trusting this jumper. That's what I like to see. You got to soften up the defense. He likes to attack, get to the free throw line, get to the rim, and he needs to make his free throws. Still only three for six in the free throw line. Yeah. But he needs to set things up by set, by knocking down that mid range shot, hitting those little floaters in the lane, because then when he gets to the basket and out in transition, he's not going to have the defense just sitting there waiting on him. I love when he I love those alley oops and those finishes. You get those easy baskets for a young player that really gets your adrenaline going and that gets your excitement going. Uh, this was a good game for RJ, but I really think this team is still really missing a point guard. It's tough to evaluate what you have yeah. with this Knicks unit, especially with all these new faces, trying to adjust to a new system, nine new faces, new coaches, new arenas, new, new, just new everything, and you don't have a point guard to organize everyone. Yeah, that's really tough, and uh, the Knicks need to get kind of their point guards, uh, you know, position squared away very soon. Now, Dennis yeah. Smith Jr. did return tonight, had missed the last seven games after the passing of his stepmother. Clearly, Dennis Smith Jr., it's not easy to step into this situation. We haven't basically played in a game in two weeks. Well, and he's also, again, he, he was struggling before he left. He picked up right where he left off where he just really looks like he's trying to find himself again and the confidence you can see it where he, you know, he, he's trying to make plays and he just can't, and it's, it's something we haven't seen out of him. Last year, we saw glimpses of him as somebody you thought could be an all-star. Mm -hmm. You're not seeing any of that this year. Alfred Payton's still out, obviously, and that's a player that they signed hoping would be a big part of the point guard rotation. But, you know, that, that it, is, it is obvious at times, <clears throat> excuse me, in some of these possessions that they struggle to get into any type of they set. They do. They totally and, and also to get easy baskets, and they have to go one-on-one -on -one half the time because they just aren't organized. All right, guys.